When I graduated from residency, the chairman, Ranga Krishnan, gave me one piece of advice. Remember, he said, the placebo effect is often bigger than what you'll achieve with most of our medications. Look for ways to enhance it in your practice. That has always inspired me, but it's also left me with a lingering doubt that this new study helps to settle, at least a little. How do you tell if your patient is responding to the med or to the placebo? This study analyzed 90 trials comparing before and after results with the placebo arm only. Their aim was to find out which psychiatric disorders are most placebo responsive. Here's what they found. The disorders that are most responsive to placebo are major depression and generalized anxiety disorder. After that comes panic disorder, ADHD, PTSD, social anxiety disorder, and bipolar mania. Those with the lowest response to placebo were OCD and schizophrenia. Those high placebo responses in depression and GAD are even higher for children. A lot of people were surprised to see the bipolar mania in the middle of the list along with PTSD and social anxiety. Well, mania does respond to a stable, regular environment with regular activities, darkness at night and light in the morning. And most mania studies were done in the hospital where that's part of the treatment. Besides the fact that many of those mania studies allowed PRN medications like benzodiazepines in the placebo arm. Otherwise, giving manic patients nothing but a sugar pill for a month is ethically questionable. In practice, most patients are responding not just to the placebo or just to the med, but to some mixture of the two. And this study gives us an idea of which of those mixtures has the upper hand. Remember, the placebo is not just false hopes about a sugar pill. It is the natural course of illness and includes regression toward the mean. That's a fancy way of saying that patients tend to come in for help when they are at their worst and likely to get better from there no matter what we do. The placebo also builds in the therapeutic relationship and the patient's own resiliency, such as when an anxious patient feels a little safer now that they're in treatment and ventures into braver acts that they would have otherwise avoided on their own. All of this reminds me of an NIH study that David Mintz shared with us last June. This was a study of antidepressants and depression, but instead of looking at which patients got better, they looked at which providers got their patients better. The results were striking. Highly effective providers got their patients better regardless of whether they were on placebo or antidepressant, while other providers had poor results even with the medication. The highly effective doctors got better results with placebo than did the doctors at the bottom group with the antidepressant. Dr. Mintz is a psychiatrist at Austin Riggs. You can read his full interview on how to enhance the placebo response in the June 2024 edition of the Carlat Psychiatry Report. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel and head on over to thecarlatreport.com and consider subscribing to our newsletter, which brings you unbiased news about all things psychiatric with useful clinical updates, expert interviews, and bottom line assessments of the latest research studies. Thanks for watching.